remarkable to them. It's just, you know, they've only known this small little close, you know, quarters where they've been pinned up, most of them their whole entire lives, and now, you know, that they actually don't have any threats anymore, that they can actually, you know, expand, and, and now the small community will actually thrive, and they'll still have plenty of fish. And crab back in the temple. <laughs> Okay. Oh, that's right. Crab meat, too. <laughs> Good one. I want to try out the water breathing sort oh. for a swim. Oh, yeah. It, at some parts of the, the, the lake, you can actually... You actually you find another cavern that goes into the, uh, uh, the temple, the first floor of that temple, and... It it actually come wherever you found that secret door towards the north of the map, you actually found a like a secret underground cavern because there was that hole in the floor, and you actually come up through that hole in the floor, and it, the water is is uh, really warm, so it's you know there was a lot of steam and, and whatnot, a lot of uh, uh, moisture, but it, yeah, you definitely found a way, and and that sword works great because you can just stay, you can go down to any depth that you want. At some points, uh, it, it, you know, it's probably 30, 40 feet, and you just feel no pressurization or anything like that. It's a really How nice item. How is my vision? Uh, now, n your vision uh, it depends on, you know, how clear the it water is. It doesn't affect normal. your... Yeah, it doesn't okay. affect your, your vision or anything. It just allows you to to breathe permanently underwater. Cool. Yeah, it's, re it's really nice. It's a nice item. Alright. Anyone uh, else? Uh, at some point, Lormar would like to take um, Aslamat to kind of step aside and have a talk with him in private. Sure. If he could. You're going to try to convert him. You no, no, I would just never. Kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the iron, the the Inquisition, it's on its way. Have you read some literature? <clears throat> I have a few yeah, so I'm, for I'm just gonna tell him yes, yes, yes. about the wonders of Corallon. <laughs> oh, I knew it! <clears throat> <laughs> My Jedi senses were right. <laughs> <laughs> That would actually be a, a god he would might be familiar with. <clears throat> yeah, you know, it might even be responsible for this everlasting fish that they seem to have too. They might already be blessed by him. I'm I'm gonna cover my ears as the dwarf talks about a human god. <laughs> <laughs> what god are we talking about? Well, Lumot really appreciates really appreciates it, but he knows of no other god except for their god, and their god is in the the council hut down here. And the, their god is actually called Kicking Bird. <laughs> Bird. <laughs> and that, All right. You know, they only know that of one god. So, you know, when you tell him that there's another god out there, he, he doesn't know what to think about that. He just kind of uh, looks at you funny. But we only know okay. one god. Yeah, this, this probably, yes, this probably isn't the time god. to mention. We know this... of Kicking Bird, and he speaks to us, and then I speak to the people. Yeah, this is like probably not the time to mention that I was my entire, you know, species was born from the blood of a god. <laughs> anyway, that's just. Anyway. We'll have to get you in here, Fearless. I need a... Okay. Uh, um, well, let's... Uh, I need a long time. Right, Lormar, have you uh, finished with your attempt? I'm actually kind of curious to see this god of theirs, though. Yeah. Uh, all I'm saying is that Coraline kind of let us through that temple and uh, saved you guys from that ancient race or whatever. But, but I respect you guys and your god-kicking bird. And Corlon is also my great 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 something or other grandfather. I think my spear had a little bit more to do that than your god did. Yeah, but this is in private, so you don't hear any of that. Please tell your god on my behalf that I thank him or her. Have some more fish. Or it. 
<laughs> have another bowl of fish. <laughs> we have all Being kinds a dwarf, of fish. I take two. We have steam fish. We have boiled fish. We have <laughs> fish au gratin. All kinds of fish. Fish on a stick. <laughs> we have on a stick. Bubble, bubble fish. <clears throat> Okay. Uh, okay. So I guess you guys are so, going to start packing up and, and heading out. Yeah, we're going to pack up and head back down the the path down the side of the volcano crater. Okay. Um, back back down towards the trees where we camped that one night, and down towards the bridge and see how far we can get. Okay. Well, do you want to basically just wait till day fourteen? and spend the, the whole day here celebrating, getting a good night's sleep, rest, and then heading out in the morning, which will put you at day 14. Mm. I mean, un unless unless they need some kind of help with the whole meeting with the other tribes, uh, I don't see anything else we really need to do here. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to leave today. Okay, well, you can you can leave. Uh, we'll say you can uh, get going about mid-afternoon, uh, probably a couple hours before the sun starts skimming down. And you can... It's not going to be daylight because it was a, a ten hour trek up the the actual uh, plateau to the top of the plateau itself. So we'll say that it will take about uh, we'll take, it'll take about six hours to get back down because you're actually not climbing and you, and and actually Fano he he knows no quicker route. So, you know, he, because he's never been off of this plateau, so he, he can't help you. So you're really going to gain no time there. But All right, we'll, well, we'll, we'll say we'll go you can down, down the... there by about midnight. You'll be down there. Okay, so we'll go down to the bottom of the trail at the bottom of the okay. crater, and we'll camp there at the edge of the volcano. Okay. Let me switch it. Whoa, bless you. Let me switch you back over to the uh, main map. All right, you should. Okay, it's the. For you guys that haven't seen this map, it is the upper left-hand map. There should be uh, two maps, so it's the the one on the left. <clears throat> so you you actually make your way back down to the about midnight. You can you can get back down to the bridge. You, you don't have any kind of encounters or anything. You you do not sense anything either. You, you don't sense any more pteranodons. So you're safe in that regards. Should we take the river or go through the mountains? Uh, well, let's see. We have the opportunity to go investigate those tracks where we stowed the boats um, or and potentially take the boats out if you want to go look for the boats um, or the alternative is to trek across the, the continent uh, or across the island down down south through the mountains. I'm actually curious to see those tracks, but I mean... Yeah, I'm fine with that. Let's we can go go. try to track down what it was. The large bipedal reptilian type of creature that you had ran into? Yeah, it was yep. like... Oh, yeah. Around here, is it? Yeah, it was right there at the River Fork. Right, so let's do that. Let's head back towards where we stowed the boats. Okay. You can... You can get down to the boats. Everything seems to be kosher. And then as you're fixing the leave, it really it, it seems like maybe maybe something was here. Uh nothing was so you had some other supplies in the, you know, in your rafts. Well not the rafts, but the, the actual wood dug canoes. But nothing's gone. But it doesn't seem like Actually, some of the, the foliage and everything that you had on top of the boats, uh, you know, to where you could hide them, well, actually, where you did hide them, seems like some of that was disturbed. disturbed. You don't know if it was by a 
any kind of creature. You don't know if it was a, a humanoid disturbance or, or whatnot. You really can't sense anything like that again with your with your tracking abilities. Okay. Well, let's. Uh, what can we find as far as tracks go? Do we know approximately where those tracks were headed? They were headed to the northwest into the mountains. Um, if I head out in that direction, can I you know, pick up uh, any of the tracks? Uh, it, it's hard because it's it's such a, a late time right now. But no, not at this point in time. You can't you can't make anything out with with tracks. Just it, it's okay. because of the. Well, if it's uh, uh, the actual no light is actually hampering you. So, all right. So if uh, that's fine, then if it's dark, then we'll camp again at the boats. Okay, you guys can can get set up. Sorry, I'm I'm pulling some stuff over from my other campaign. So I wanted to tr uh, transmogrify a bunch of different mobs and stuff, uh, monster sheets that I had, and I wasn't able to do that because I was not feeling well, so I'm trying to get caught up real quick on a few things, so if you guys will have any dialogue between one another, feel free to. Or if you want to ask uh, uh, the villager any questions, he'll, he'll be more than happy to answer any questions well, as I'm doing this. <laughs> well, this gives us six days left now because this we had the one day getting down the mountain one day getting back to the boats so we're now we've got six days left to get back to the village uh, we can probably spend a little bit of time here uh, <coughs> but I imagine it's going to take us uh, well, at least a day to get if not two by boat to get back to the village uh, well yeah it's going to take you at least another uh, another two days to get back. Well, it just depends on, well, yeah, we'll say two days to either uh, Panatube or uh, Terranoa. You can you can get back in about two days because you're going to have one day getting back to the water itself because you've got to drug, uh, drudge your way through the marsh as well with your boats. Uh, then, then you're going to have another uh, day worth of, of boat travel, at least a, bit, a day, actually. Yeah, so I'm thinking we've only got maybe three days best um, here to kind of, or to do anything else. Um, would you guys just like to go ahead and start heading back, or do you want to try to track this thing down? Or Well, we, we can give it at how. least... No, go ahead. Um, we can give it at least, maybe we can spend the next day going out there looking for it, and then a day coming back, and then head back if we don't find anything. We'll have about okay. three days. Yeah, that works. Alright, cool. So we'll sleep through the night, Dave, and the next morning get up, try to find some tracks, see if we can track down the creature. If we don't find it in the first day, we're going to get back in the boats and head out. Okay. Uh, so you basically set up a just a small makeshift camp, small temporary camp. Uh, you, you can actually... You get all your spells back. Well, you actually, you, you had all that. Well, no, you didn't, because you didn't have any kind of rest at the the actual village of Mon, uh, Montu. So it was actually we, probably a good thing anyway you did this. So. Well, we slept at the base of the mountain anyways. We'll, we'll say everybody has, uh, everybody's back to full hit points. Everybody's back to full hit die heals. Everybody's back to full uh, spell slots for the day. And... You get up, uh, well, you don't get up. You just kind of, the daylight wakes you up. It's probably about 8 o'clock in the morning, and now you're on day 14. So you have seven days left. You actually have one week until Drake gets here and then takes you back to Waterdeep. Plenty of sushis, underscore, back on the right, plateau. Well, you know, I guess. Get up. Plenty. Cook plenty. Some breakfast. Stuff like that. Pack up and get ready to uh, see if we can track down this thing. Okay. You start trekking this way. As I, as I was saying, uh, you start heading towards, uh, well, on the map at number 17 ish. 
and you're trekking through the the it's not really steep mountains but it, you know it's it's a mixture of both hills and you got a you know a couple of small climbs but nothing too treacherous nothing hazardous there's no rolls involved and you come to a uh, sort of like a uh, a small ridge between you know two conjoining mountains and you can actually feel a uh, a tremor I guess you could say uh, especially you seeing that you can actually track things Kim you can actually sense a, a sort of vibration in the ground sort of heavy footsteps and the party can also actually feel this as well and you know later on but you're actually able to detect it more and between these two conjoining parts of the, of the mountains you can actually see a massive two-legged creature something that you've never seen before uh, ba it, it's basically it's a, a tyrannosaurus uh, I'll just tell you what it is I mean your characters don't know this but you can kind of envision what you see from a role play standpoint so basically you see a creature that looks like a tyrannosaurus rex holy crap uh, okay, My first is, it's a deformed uh, dragon <laughs> yeah that's it's a, a drag it's a wingless dragon with short stubby arms <laughs> she's got t-rex arms <laughs> okay so let's... they're only good for playing a ukulele Okay, how far out is the <clears throat> creature? Uh, we'll we'll say the the creature's probably about probably about four hundred yards away. A good hasn't noticed good us yet, right? Distance. No, it, it it hasn't noticed you yet because you you guys are kind of hiding in the uh, in the low foliage and everything. All right, well we're gonna stay hiding in the low foliage. Um, <laughs> and old Fano, I think the he's best... he's shitting his pants, man. He's never seen anything like this. He he doesn't even know anything like this exists. So he's <laughs> clicking his. He don't know what the hell to do. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm. If I have to cast silence on him, I will. <clears throat> uh, but he needs to calm down. Yeah, he's he's a little jittery. Uh, so he he gets calmed down. So he he can actually understand you telling him to settle the hell down. Okay, so well, I, we found it. Yeah. Well, I would now like, that we're now that we're actually here, do we really <laughs> want to take this thing off? <laughs> no. no. Not really. No. I just I, wanted to see what it was. I think we can get a, a good jump on him if he if we get if he gets further down than we are, and we can uh, get him from behind with surprise. I think we got a good shot at this. You actually well, want to fight that thing? I, I personally Rhiannon looks yeah, I, very I'm, skeptical. I'm 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 a slayer. Yes, I want to go <laughs> want to go <laughs> fight that thing. <laughs> this is what I've been trained for. I wanna I wanna jump at him. Oh, I'm not gonna lie, there is a good trophy on that. You can't bring its head back with us. Ah, we don't have the room. Well, we can right. probably pull the teeth with it. The, the teeth would uh, probably be worth good. Uh, Funo or whatever needs to stay back, really back, so he hasn't died. Oh, the the villager. <laughs> oh, yeah, he has, he's he's gonna. He has no problem with that. Yeah, he's gonna stay hidden. He's gonna stay in the foliage while this takes place. Okay, he's just. <laughs> yeah, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh my gosh! Yeah. All right, well. I just wanted to. I just wanted to assuage my scientific curiosity, but you guys want to kill it? I, I whatever. If we really want to, okay. I mean, I, I, I think I'll give it a shot. I think we should watch it for a bit, see if there are any others. There might be more. Okay. Well, we'll wait. How? How long is it going to take before it passes us on the on the path? Well, seeing that you are about 400 yards away, you can actually see this thing for for quite a while, and you know he's just kind of roaming around. He's he's not roaming around anywhere near you are, 
or you know either coming your way and, and you know for that matter he, he's just you know he, he's a good bit away we'll just put it that way and you can you can still see uh, see where he's at you see no young you see no uh, mates or or anything like that as well so Well, All Jim, right. on your uh, on your call then. Yep. All right. I'm gonna basically what we're gonna we're gonna wait here, and I'm gonna as soon as this thing gets past us, say twenty feet past us, I'm gonna jump out behind it and go run and attack it. Um, at, when I do that, I want you guys to fire every missile weapon you have at this thing. Um, okay. And then you know we're just gonna play the fight from there. Mm. I, ideally, we would like Baron to join, um, but that's up to Baron. I'm sure. Well, Baron should be here. Well, that's what I mean. He, he has a we he has a ranged weapon, though. That's what I'm saying. He can fire at it before he even gets into oh, into range. I got gotcha. you. What I'm gotcha. saying is that I I'd like him to join in the melee combat if possible, but it's up to him. Oh, okay. I, I I don't know what I was thinking. I was thinking that he was going to hang back with the with the villager, but. No, I, I get it. No. <laughs> yeah, sure. All right, I'll charge up with you. Okay, so you uh, you watch him path around a little bit, and you actually gain a, a vantage point of uh, you know a, a point to where you can actually get a a pretty good uh, attack in on him. And I will switch over to the the other map real quick. So. For you guys, and I built this map in about uh, a minute. So this is a like a pre-made, sort of like a, a battle map, it's sort of like a rocky terrain type of map. So he looks kind of dead. <laughs> yeah, no, he's definitely not dead. He's just uh, uh, whisking around. That's an ugly one. That's ugly. Uh, These are some ugly ass miniatures, aren't they? <laughs> Definitely ugly. I just leave the first one on there. Ugly? Yeah, well. Okay, so where were we hiding? Well, you're not hiding anywhere now because you've you've had to actually literally run between the uh, in this little ravine to uh, basically you know meet him head on. Oh, well, we're not trying to meet him head on. We're trying to let him pass and attack from behind. Okay, well you you do that and we'll say that he's right here then. <laughs> Okay, real quick, before we run out of cover and everything, can Lormar cast a spell on us really quick? Sure. You guys got a, a free action before the uh, Tyrannosaurus starts to react. So he just happens to be 30 feet away, that bastard. <laughs> uh, I'm going to cast a uh, prayer on us all really quick. Well, the gorge isn't really that you know that far apart. You probably have another feet, uh, 30, 40 feet on the other side of him, so... Well, All right. Well, I'm not going to charge until I know I can reach him in that round. If that makes sense, you can I'm not gonna reach him. Uh, and let charge. him turn around and bite me. So, can't you? Uh, isn't it a charge your, your action? Yeah, you can. So you can, get in you there can move and charge. No, I can't. I can only move 25 feet. Oh, that's your right. charge adds 10. 25. He's a dwarf, though. He gets a speed re uh, reduction. I know, but charge or adds 10, reduction. so he can actually get to him. Where do they where do they add to the charge? I've never that's, read that unless it's new. Another one of those it's, great it's new, in the newest uh, thing. Editions. Yeah. It's in the, the how to play, section. I think. It's a it's a feat? No, it's in the how to play section. I need to learn how to play then. I don't remember reading that. Do you, Chris? It's in here. Actions to charge, combat. you choose a target that is is at least ten feet away from you. So I, uh, he's not close enough. Yeah, but that that's in addition to your movement. This is oh my bad, I was looking at charger. Because movement is different. 
right? What page is this on? So it, I can read it's on page on. 17. It says, to charge, you choose, you choose a target that is at least 10 feet away from you. You move up to half your speed to a position where the target is within your reach. So I have to be, he's got to be within half would be 12, 13. So he's got to be within Never 23 mind. feet to, for me to do this. No. I thought he could do it. Never mind. Yeah. There is a charge feet, but I don't have that. I don't know if that would be worth getting. Yeah. It might be worth it, depending on your play style. So. Um, okay, so then I'm not going to do a full-on charge until I know I can reach him in that round. So how big is that rock behind him? That's a fairly large rock. We'll say it's... Uh, it's about about seven, eight feet across. It's rather large. How tall is it? Rather rough, man. Probably about the same. All right, so, so I can so get to the rock. But how how fast is he moving? He's uh, actually his movement is uh, quite a bit. So he he's definitely traveling faster than than what you guys can travel actually you guys have to he's running basic no he's just normal movement but he's actually a, you you guys have to actually uh hasten your you know basically hustle to keep up with him because he's right. got such long well, then, strides then fine what, what we're gonna do then is i'm gonna go ahead and charge okay i'm not gonna I'm going to try to cut him off. So I'm going to hustle. That's the stupidest thing I ever did, but... Um, You're a dwarf. You can take it. <laughs> I can ray a frost. Slow him okay, down. I'm... Bless you. Hit him with. Ah, if you. you can reach him with Ray, hit him. And I'm gonna move to here. I'm gonna move my 25 feet and cast a swift spell. It's okay. Then we have claw attacks. Yeah, well, he's he gonna can, bite your head off. He could actually. You could probably actually intercept him because if he casts Ray of Frost, he'll turn around and basically meet you. So if you're moving at the same time you can still get an attack, you know what I'm saying? So I move this far, I cast Swift, and I'm going to prepare a reaction. If he turns to a point where I can hit him, I'm going to attack him. Okay, that sounds good. No. And everybody and else, fire your ranges. Okay, so who all is attacking ranges? <coughs> Everyone? I have to charge in with him, so... Okay. Okay. Well, oh, you can I, you can move 25 feet and still use your bow. Yeah, you can still move. Uh, what I'm going to do is set up a, on the initiative tracker. I'm going to set you guys up with a with, with an initiative roll, so I can kind of get this ready for uh, next round. Wow. So I basically, initiative. Oh I'm God. going to let everyone, everyone is going to, seeing that the uh, the beast was not expecting you, and, you know, he's got a loud step, and, you know, he makes a lot of noise when he runs. You guys are actually able to sneak up on him, and you're able to all get a free movement. Uh, you've done yours, Gim, so we'll just start with Baron. You can go ahead and go, and at the end... Uh, the T-Rex will be able to engage, but you will still have your reaction gim, so you'll be able to basically go turn-based with them. That's so, 25. Okay. Uh, are you going to shoot at him as well, or are you just going to hold your position there? I uh, I mean, I can switch back uh, after I shoot, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You'll, it's okay, just yeah, a sure. minor action. Yeah. All right. Well, let's take a shot then. That's what that thing sounds like. <laughs> My awesome sound effects, guys. <laughs> okay, a hit. All right, you are hitting a 
Armor class 13. Rugged leather armor. Waka waka waka. 